So again, nothing electric yet, right? Nothing electric. But then what we're going to do is go on over and switch you and use an electric cap to set the non-electric off, and that's why we're going to run the wire out here, so we can take it on out to the attic and blast it from there. everybody to be rolling their clay. You can either take mud with a lot of aggregate in it, or we can turn around and just take clay and pack it in there. Now protective of the tube though too when you're packing. Thank you. Yeah, I just slide it. I usually actually use steel. And or remember you don't steel have to rock or gravel, stone. That packs them real good. And Remember, you don't have to pack it in very tight, right? Enough. Because of the shockwave traveling at such a speed, mm -hmm. it packs so fast that it doesn't even have a chance to think about pushing it out. So you don't have to worry about panking it, if I can use local terminology, panking it real well. The other thing I was talking about was galvanometer. Okay, so here we got a galvanometer that's legit, making sure that we don't have enough current produced to generate heat across that, in, 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 the, in the case of an electric cap, that bridge wire, right? We don't want to, so make sure that it's certified. And right here we're talking about blasting galvanometer. So I emphasize again, don't ever think about using a voltmeter or somebody's electric meter. We never use that whatsoever. Biggest mistake, that, that, you know, people don't think that much about it, but the problem is it can generate too much current. I'll say no carrying your packaging separately with the sticks from the caps, right? All of them okay. separate. So we're going to go with our top hole first, which is this one, right? Okay. So I'm going to go like this. This is a depth cord, which you know I don't even, I can put my thing right to that. Yeah, well, your last hole, I always run one out. Oh, for the redundancy, because of yes. the blast. Right. Sure you can right. cut it off. That's, we were talking about that the other day. Worrying about running and that redundancy, so that if you do, in fact, cut it off, you've got that extra lead in there. That's also the advantage of the new electric caps with the chips, right? You never cut anything off there once the timer starts. He's putting us out with a rock there because he's going to put his cap there and he wants it protected and he wants to make sure that it isn't just jarred to be pulled apart. Now, when we're checking this with the galvanometer, we're not actually checking our non-L, right? We're just checking the one cap that we're going to use to fire that off. That's all we're checking. Okay. So in essence, we're just a quality control on a single cap. And at the same time, we got the leads here, you notice, in the foil, okay? They're always together. Always together. So put yep. your cap in, keep that foil on. As you stretch your wires out, you can put rocks along it so it doesn't jar. And then you connect it to the reel here. You notice open leads here, right, where he's going to connect. But you notice on the other end, where's your other end? Uh, right. right here, they'll be twisted. Right here, he's got them twisted so you can't have any stray current through it. Always keep, always keep these twisted right until the end so no current can get through it. And you always keep them together. You notice that this lead line is actually, it's a two-part. You actually have to pull it apart, right, to feed. And the reason for that is you don't want to set up a, a loop or a, an antenna that could induce or conduct, a, you know, actually induce electricity or a current through there. So here's what I always do. I always do this here and check. With, uh, Each individual cap should be just, checked. Just to check it, see if you've got current through it. And again, the current has to be less than what? 250, or uh, less than 50 to be assured that you're not, that and 250 to make sure that you do have the... I always hook them back together. And for safety? Gonna, now we're going to go to our number one hole. This is all I do is this. Yeah. 
Now, also, a lot of times with non-ls, like the splicers that I had in the other day, you can actually slip the cap right in there, right? In, in. But in this case, what he's doing is he's taping that over so that, in fact, the detonation of the cap is going to initiate the detonation to get that dust inside that plastic tubing fired off. Okay, now, first thing so we want to do is we want to check our wire that we're... Yep, that we got conductivity here. Because we're tw tied together we're here, tied right? We're tied together, right. I want to make sure we got good leads. And we got it. Okay. Again. So that's there. That's there. That's there. So in essence, we got our non-L connected to our electric now. Yeah, you love it. And the greatest concern right now is the cap there. Because the other caps are in the hole, so we need to protect this cap right here. So our most dangerous thing is to watch out for this. Then run this wire back, connect it to this, with making sure that these are twisted together so we can't get any stray. And then what we'll do is we'll check it again. At the end, we'll open this up and we'll check it with the galvanometer again to make sure we got, in essence, we got good connection to the bridge inside that cap. And here we go. Actually, one of the, if I could just show one thing. Oh. One of the nicest things to see here with the loose, okay, typically in a wrap, you're wrapping one wire on the other, and what it is, it tends to be the lighter gauge, such as with the cap here that wraps around it. We have an ignite. Now you can get that with your thumb Yeah, I got it. Here's here. Okay. And then the nicest thing to double up and assure yourself is to take this, form over and form a loop, and then take the two together and okay. twisting that loop, because there's far less resistance there. And what's more, even if need be, you can take these and you want to keep them separate and you put one under a rock and another one under a rock and making sure that there's no water in there right to conduct yeah. okay so you get much better contact than when you form your loop and it's easy i mean you know otherwise you're not be worrying about the loose ends and then twisting that so you got actually four times the amount of surface area in contact but keeping them separate. You gotta keep them separate. And dry. So what's gonna happen here is this is the electric cap's gonna shoot this one off. It's gonna shoot the hole. It's gonna shoot that hole. Then in turn it's gonna this one here also has the delay on it. That goes down and shoots this hole, my second hole at the same time. This is blowing, this is popping this. And then that'll delay down into this hole. And that one's connected up to this one. That's going to be shot at the same time as your second hole. And um, that'll go off. And then that tail is, I always check the tail on it. So if you know that's popped, all your holes went through. If you don't, yeah. if you're digging dynamite, then it's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> The other thing you note in the pattern that he's chosen, he's taking the top one first because the burden's the least. As you move down further, then there's two free faces, right? The face yes. as we have towards the drift, plus the face that was created yes. by the previous hole. And when we get down to the bottom where we're going to be blasting the greatest amount, that's got uh, two got free faces. To go. It's yeah, got somewhere to go. This is going to blow out. This one here's going to blow up out and out. out. And this one's going to come up. up and maybe a little bit out. <laughs> mm -hmm. But again, making sure that as you're running this out, that you're not pulling in any way whatsoever on your leads, because you don't want to disturb yeah, the you don't want to touch them mm -hmm. Okay. No stepping on the wires as you walk down. Okay. You hear them around heavy equipment, but anytime we're in a blast, we keep our ear muff off. Okay. Not that we don't want to protect our ears, but you got a huge volume in that muff that's going to go into a little channel in your ear and you got the venturi effect and you're more likely to blast out your ear that way. So you always remove your muffs, you can keep your earplugs in, but in addition to the earplugs you always want to cover your ears so that you're making sure that you're protected in there. So no muffs ever 